Hello everyone, my name is Connor Hoffman. Welcome to my setup slash mock workshop slash room tour video. Uh, it's only been about a year since I announced doing something like this, so yeah. My reasoning for doing this is because I'm going to be moving out from my parents' house in about a month. I wanted to basically record everything I've got here for future prosperity and just to show it off before it gets demolished and moved to another place. I'm going to be filming this in the order where I get, go over my setup, my room, and my mock workshop, all in that order. Uh, sorry if you guys can hear the fan noises, it's pretty hot in my room so I can't really turn those off, especially when all my lights are on and stuff like that. So uh, without further ado, I guess you guys are sick of looking at my gaming chair. Uh, we will move on to the setup. So this right here is my gaming setup. If I can learn how to focus, I think that's good. Uh, yeah, I've got dual monitors on an arm. I've got a Corsair keyboard and a Logitech mouse. Uh, one of my monitors is 24 inches and the other is 30. I've got my blue Yeti there on a mount, on a shock mount with a uh, mic microphone arm and a pop filter on it, obviously for maximum quality. It's uh, not the best mic in the world, but it'll it'll it works for what I use it for. Um, over here is my computer. This is a Fantex uh, case, Fantex full power case with a, uh, it's got a i7-4790K installed in it, which is water-cooled, and it's also got two, let's see if I can focus here, it's got two GTX 970s in it, in SLI, uh, it's also got 16 gigs of RAM, and everything in this computer I built and decorated myself. And I am obviously very proud of how it turned out. Uh, yeah, everything's got dust filters and all that. It's LED fans. I've even got a little switch installed on the back here so that when I turn it on, it lights up even brighter. Sorry for all the dust there. So yeah, that's, uh, that's my beast of a computer. Um, all my mock shelves are up here, which I do keep all of my mocks assembled, even after I've showcased them, and really may, may or may not have any use for them anymore, besides posing on shelves and showing off in future videos, but yeah, they've all, they're all still here, even, even the first ones I uploaded, right there, since Order Moss New Files came out, um, yeah, so backing up a little trying to learn how to use the focus because I don't film with this in video mode very often. Um, one thing that's pretty much the main attraction of my setup is if I pick up this remote right here. If I sound delayed it's because I'm trying to adjust the focus ring manually. It doesn't auto focus on my camera. I can press this button and underneath this in the corner of the shelf here you can see that little white box. That's the LED sensor controls, and that's kind of a spoiler for what's going to happen next. So once I aim at that and turn it on, voila. Focus. And back up so I can show the whole thing. Yeah. That is, that is my setup and my mock shelves. It's alright to be jealous. Um, putting it on red so it matches the computer. Yeah, it's very nice. This was a real pain to set up, especially to get it look this, to get it to look this good. And that top shelf has a lot of trouble staying active. Sometimes I have to go and poke at it until it turns back on, because it'll shut off automatically. I'm gonna go through all my mocks and showcase them, just one one at a time, real close up, so you guys can each get a look of how they look on the shelves and all together. It's a rare, rare thing to see 30 mo over 30 mocks all built together and standing on shelves. So starting here, we've got Atron. We've got uh, the time traveling Makuta. Spoilers. Uh, 
Um, we've got Minus, Gringette, Lemera, Kunpaku, both forms of Noxus, and the great being Chaos, back there behind Noxus, and there's Dragon X. Not my, not the actual self mock, but my replica of the self mock, my recreation of him. Uh, Chaluna, Gameth, uh, Callum, and Kasi, together as always. Or I guess uh, too soon. Raxus back there is a new EX form, I guess you could say. And up here we've got Regron, IX. Both forms of Helrix, Tobduck, Mars and Ray, Axon and Brutaka, Artaka, all the great beings are standing side by side, obviously, uh, Yukure, the Master, my tallest and, well, actually no, T Tobduck is taller, but yeah, he's one of my tallest mocks, and Flandrix, and all the way up here, we've got an Exotoa. Sorry if this is out of focus, I can't reach the focus ring from here. Uh, Solanus, Velika, Matoran form of Ray. Uh, this empty spot is where Matoran, uh, Noxus, and Matoran Matoro would go, but that's they're currently being their portraits currently being taken. Uh, I'll explain that later. All six Toa Mata, my Rakshi Stars revamp, Matoro Inaika. Um, Vampra and Avaki. Um, there's my marquee sign. I got that during my graduation ceremony. And uh, my Eagle Scout and my Jesus. Uh, good transition into the uh, room tour here. Oh, yeah. There's my Sennheiser headphones that I keep hang hung on a coat hook back there. Very nice headphones. I always recommend Sennheisers for uh, headsets. Uh, I got some video game collectibles down there too. Some Fallout, Assassin's Creed, and uh, Skyrim stuff. My little Shimada logo there. Another bobblehead and a Deadpool cheeky hiding in the back. Um, up here I got my Overwatch poster, which is a uh, a late edition, but it's very nice. Y you'll also notice I'll have a lot of posters here. Here's my six Toamata posters. All my old original posters are laminated, of course, because I don't want to rip them or tear them in the future. Uh, I've got a Nuka-Cola little portrait thing right there, and an old Photoshop of Noxus that I put in the frame that I got with a birthday present. Um, back over here, I've got a... It's kind of hard to see, but I've got the Paraka poster that originally came out in the comic books. As well as up here, I sleep against Baraki Kalma up there, and then all six Mictoran like po mini posters that came with the McDonald's sets are up there. Obviously, need to be laminated because they're old, and if I sleep next to them, they're at risk of being torn. Um, and my most prized possessions are over here. Uh, I got a big old framed. Um, Bionicle 2002 original poster, which is very, very nice. Just, just admire that for a second. Okay, and then also over here I've got, this was also a present from my girlfriend for Christmas. She gave me this custom made uh, actual size Genji sword from Overwatch. Yeah, I'm a pretty big Overwatch nerd. Although I don't really have time to play it as much as I used to. Uh, and yes, if you wanted to know, it does retract. Or, not retract, it does come out of the sheath. It's kind of hard to do this with one hand. <laughs> I've got to be careful because this thing is fragile. Alright. <sighs> there we go. Just admire the craftsmanship. Very nice. Uh, might as well go over the other stuff under my shelves. I've got some 
or other my, under my loft bed. I've got a bunch of collectibles over there. All my books and media are stored on that shelf behind my Assassin's Creed uh, merchandise, I guess you can call it. Obviously, Connor's my favorite assassin from Assassin's Creed because he shares my name, and actually, Assassin's Th Creed 3 was my favorite Assassin's Creed game, ironically. No relation. Um, Darth Vader helmet, everyone needs one of those. And uh, yeah, moving on to up here, I've got these Star Wars Ultra builds. I only collect the Stormtroopers, basically anything that doesn't have a human face. That's all I buy. So I got my Scout Trooper back there, Stormtrooper, Darth Vader. There's my lamps that I use for lighting my photography and my how to builds. Back behind that, that's the uh, the bucket that I used as the reactor for the Battle for Fort Skyhook film. It's uh, Fort Skyhook has since been completely destroyed, and I mean like the mock itself, not just in the movie, which that happened too. And this Rainbow Warrior mess right here is my first ever large-scale system mock, which I deemed, which I dubbed the Rainbow Chaser, because you know rainbows have a pot of gold underneath it. Remember, you know pirates go after gold. Yeah, um, this is probably going to be demolished before I uh, before I move out because it just takes up a lot of space and it's not as attractive looking as it as I used to think it was. So yeah, um, up here is where I keep all my Bionicle canisters and boxes and everything. Basically, Bionicle 2015 boxes have covered up all my original boxes, but uh, I may plan to do something creative with these in the future. Uh, I don't know what I want to do with these collapsed Lego set boxes, but yeah. And uh, I have one more shelf up here, kind of hidden away, and that's where I keep the Axelara, the Land Speeder, uh, recent edition, obviously, and then the really big Lego Star Wars sets that I don't really want to take apart. Yeah, I keep those up there. I've got some more hidden in this drawer up top here. AT-AT and the ATTE. I've also got like that little um, separatist like, fighter or whatever it's called shuttle. And yeah, uh, that's a good transition into my mock workshop. As you can see, all my sorting bins are kind of crammed in my closet behind, between this other dresser of mine. Um, I'll go over these things on the floor in a second, but uh, this thing right here, this whole tower of drawers, is my most is the newest addition here. That's where I've sorted all my system into it, and I used to have this second to last drawer here in my dresser filled almost completely to the brim with basically all my scrapped system sets. They, uh, anytime I get a new Lego set just for the minifigures, I'd throw the scrap, the uh, ship or vehicle or whatever in there. And, you know, anything that wasn't Star Wars, basically, that I needed to keep together for filming, for Skyhook or Crimson Empire or whatever, that all went in that drawer, and I finally went through it, through it all, uh, completely took everything apart and sorted it by type of parts in there. And uh, that's what brought about these things. I'm going to sit on the floor. And as you can see, I've got some system mocks here. Uh, these are for my upcoming film, Lego Star Wars Crimson Empire the movie. Uh, some of you guys might still be around from when the original Crimson Empire was out. So uh, I've actually, since I started sorting those pieces out, I've actually started making progress on ships and vehicles and sets recurring sets for the uh, film. This is going to be the first set in, the, or these two system built sets here are going to be the first two sets in the movie and I need to uh, obviously film something on them yet but I've prepared, I've basically prepared the sets and when I move out I'll start the filming eventually. Uh, all the minifigures for the whole cast are in these two bags here. Uh, this one's, this one right here is all the main or like the main characters and this one here is just a really tightly packed bag of like background characters for like the bars and like the uh, the extra planets and stuff in the film. Um, here is a mock of a expanded universe ship called a uh, let me think it's a skip ray blast boat and it's uh yeah I built this one afternoon it's supposed to just be a background piece not really supposed to fly or anything, or like be filmed 
in flight, but we'll see about that. And it's supposed to look junky, by the way, if if you were wondering. That's just not me. That's not just me being lazy. And here's a little speeder. I've actually had this built for like years now. And uh, here's a mock of a TIE Interceptor, which is basically just the original TIE Interceptor set with gray colors and the body of the TIE fighter set that came out like a couple years ago. Over here is a, the interior of Carnor Jax's Star Destroyer, which, you know, very uh, nicely built. It's even got a little sliding door here, which the details are on this side for it. But yeah, nice little set there. Uh, big base plate just to be a hanger. And uh, this over here is like surface of an unknown planet, at least unknown to me at the time, where uh, the film is introduced. It's basically all these stormtroopers are going to die to a bomb. I believe the original trailer for my first Crimson Empire series is on the, is still available on my channel, and you can uh, you can go watch at least the audio part of it. Watch it for the audio, because it's going to be the same audio for the movie. And yeah, and that brings me to the actual sorting sorting stuff. So I'll go through my new system stuff real quick, just to get it over with. Right here I have this giant bin of all my one-third plates, so anything smaller than, well, obviously anything plate-sized. And here I have all my slope and cone pieces, anything that's got like a grade or a curve in it anywhere, that's all in there. And here I've got, and this one's kind of hard to explain, I've got like set piece decorations and functions. So imagine if you wanted to build something against a wall, like all the function based set or Lego pieces are in here, as well as decorations. I should filter those apart eventually, but I only had a few spaces to work from and both both of those categories are too big to fit in either of these spaces, so I didn't do that. Uh, and here's all my ooh, and here's all my Technic system pieces, so like tires and ah, tires and you know all that stuff. And then up here is last but not least the uh, all Lego studs and one by one pieces. So, yeah, I've got my bin of just bricks right here, anything full size or larger. Uh, I got a bunch of miscellaneous parts in here, basically all the big obnoxious stuff that comes with Lego sets that you don't really want to keep mixed in with all your other things, as well as base plates, because that's where they fit. And yeah, I showed you that already. Up here I got all my minifigure parts and, you know, some old bionicles in the way. Not old Bionicles, these are actually 2015 and 2016 Bionicles. What am I talking about? Anyway, minifigure stuff back there. All sorted in two categories. And ah, let's go from largest to smallest bins, shall we? So, right here is all my uh, two ball joint pieces, uh, limb pieces. Anything with more than one ball joint in it is in here, obviously, because there's only ones to twos. Here is all my feet pieces. Here is all my obnoxiously large torso pieces. Okay, moving on. Here I've got some miscellaneous Technic junk. My Borak shields and uh, parts and all these things that just are obnoxious to sort and take up too much space to be put into the smaller sorting things. We even got these really long axles from a LEGO Star Wars set. All my bent lift arm Technic pieces. All my straight lift arm Technic pieces. Uh, let's go up here. I've got some work in progress stuff right there. Let's focus a little bit. Uh, CCBS. Glorious translucent pieces. And here I've got all my um, spine pieces and like rubber and even this cloth piece. Just anything rubberized or obnoxiously large is in there. And I have shells, CCBS shells. 
And uh, down here. Oh, I'm not gonna open these all the way, but these are my large armor pieces. As you can see, it's kind of, it's literally cramped to bursting in here because of that piece. It just barely, or that whole tower of drawers just barely didn't fit. Um, launcher pieces, uh, large weapon pieces. Oops. Also, these are filled to bursting right now, overflowing. And next on the list, masks. All the mask pieces I've got in there. Small armor pieces, so like a Nika sized pieces, these uh, spines, armor add ons, all that kind of stuff. Got some small weapon pieces in here. My classification for a small weapon is anything smaller than a Nuva weapon, the average Nuva weapon. Um, up here, I've got limb pieces with one ball joint or less, so obviously all these kind of things, Alphantorin limbs, Matoran limbs, slicer, and here I've got hand connectors with Glatorian fists and friction joints mixed in, all that kind of stuff, and small torso pieces, so like Rakshi pieces, gearboxes, Matoran bodies, Vaki waists. And Ica wastes. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. Or rock shell pieces. Uh, and uh, last but not least, I know you guys love it when I say that. Um, useful head pieces. Because this is a small bin and there's a lot of different head pieces for Bionicle, which some are more obnoxious than the others. I got Baki heads, Mata heads, uh, Metric heads. 2015 and 2016 heads and Batorian heads. Uh, long dual socket arms. Short dual socket arms. These are going to get hard to film because my clothes are right here. I've got. Whoop, don't mind that. Ammo for launchers. Tubes. And useless head pieces. So a lot. Obmentorin, or no, not Obmentorin, uh, Mictorin heads, Anika heads, Karaka heads, Hera Factory, the new Ultra Build Star Wars, all those useless things. And yeah, that's my, that's all the drawers from my mock workshop. Up here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my tackle boxes, because you literally can't sort your pieces without tackle boxes. These are the lifesaver of sorting equipment. Alright, um, I'm not going to go through everything here because it would take way too long, but I'm just going to open it up and pan slowly over the top so you can see the basic idea of how things are sorted. I'll explain only a few things. These are like the hand building system pieces that I've basically taken out and anything else that I've like used during mocking to uh, add greebles. All that sort of stuff is in here. Uh, useful one by one pieces. I don't know why I have such a big drawer for these, but it's really easy to sift through all of these. Also got my cut lightsaber tubes and all that stuff in there. Claw pieces, uh, Exoforce arm, or you know, finger pieces, basically. So yeah, all that sort of stuff. Focus. There we go. And I'm just going to pan slowly over the top of it so you guys can get an idea of how I sort my pieces. Got a whole lot of friction two lung pins because I never use them in mocks for some reason. I can never. I always need the three long ones. Yeah, a whole bunch of gear pieces too. And, that, and this is all my brain stem pieces and over here is just a bunch of miscellaneous pieces for uh, uh, you know if I only have like one or two of each piece those they go in there so yeah that's all of those overall I highly recommend you guys sort your pieces because you don't you only need a good memory and you don't even need that many drawers if you can sort them kind of like how I did where you just have general general uh, concepts behind 
each, what each drawer is for. Like for instance, I, there's so many slope pieces in this that don't match up, but they, they all classify as slopes. So if I need something that's got a slope in it, I just go into that drawer. And instead of having to sift through every other piece in my collection. Thank you guys very much for watching. Um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to miss this place, but obviously all this stuff is coming with me to my new house. So yeah, once again, thank you guys for watching. Um, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a tour of my new house when I move into it. I'll be uh, it's a bit of a fixer-upper at the moment, but I'll eventually be turning it into something hopefully at least as cool as this. And uh, yeah, I'll also have a much bigger studio that won't be a bedroom, or won't be my bedroom, I guess. So I'll have much more room to do filming, uh, stop motion, and all sorts of that kind of stuff. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I hope you guys are too. Uh, let me know if you if you'd like to see that. I may even do. You know, if this does well, I may even do some more vlog type content, I guess, in the future, but I'll, I'll definitely do a, a tour, and I'll definitely keep you up to date with the progress on my new house. Um, so yeah, have yourselves a very nice day, and thank you for watching and all your support, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. My parents house. No matter root. These are system creations for my uh, upcoming film, Lego Star Wars The Battle for Fork Sky. Uh, whoa. I'm stupid. I call those little bits.